Alessandro here from Spicy Mustache with the aim to create a space fully organic and sustainable. I'm sharing new tips every week in order to help you creating your own green area. Lately, there are more and more people talking about organic gardening, but there is a bit of confusion and misleading about this really simple practice. So let's start by defining the word organic. It was strong enough to serve me Pictures of your face and eyes and flashing through my mind Basically, organic means the use of food produced by fertilizer of animal or plant origin without using any sort of chemical fertilizer, growth stimulant, antibiotics and pesticides. By doing organic gardening, you help to prevent a loss of topsoil, toxic runoff that could cause water pollution or soil contamination, and you also prevent from killing insects, birds, and many beneficial bacteria for your soil. For example, every time you use a chemical pesticide, you kill all the pests in your garden, but you also kill all the pollinators, and you alter completely the biodiversity of your garden. Also, you kill all the good microbes and bacteria in your soil, and as a consequence, all the fruit and vegetables that were treated with this chemical fertilizer you're gonna make us feel sick as we are made as well of good bacteria and microorganisms. Most big companies producing fertilizer or pesticides that are misleading us by promoting this kind of products that are mixed with really bad chemicals for your garden. And eventually they will give you a really good crop over the arc of three to five years, but then they will damage completely your soil, turning it into dirt, creating desertification. Organic gardening promotes working close to nature in order to improve the soil structure and increase the biodiversity of bacteria and germs in your soil. In this way, we can fight global warming by helping soil to capture and store carbon, emulating Mother's Nature way of creating and preserving the environment. I had the great opportunity to have a live chat with Marco from Virginia and he explains many interesting things and also how to get started into organic gardening. So how's it going? Pretty good, going good. It's, um, it's raining today. Ah, oh, right. You mentioned that yesterday, right? We were just talking about that. When did you start like doing natural farming and why did you start doing natural farming? It's only been about four years. Okay. Um, but I had always been, you know, like focused on, you know, clean ways of growing. Why are chemicals bad for like the garden like you know for nature like not not only the garden yeah i mean people think that you know chemicals are a good way to grow plants and chemicals do grow plants and they look really good and you know they may even smell really good um but the thing with chemicals is whatever you put in your plants ultimately you're putting into your body when you do natural farming methods you focus more on growing the microbes that are in the soil that support the plant growth. You're saying that you try to cooperate with nature in order to have a more natural way of like growing things, the more like like mother's nature does. Do as nature does, you know, is one of the main things. So. Yeah, all right. So for example, if someone is new and he wants to get introduced in this, you know, uh, way of farming, how would you recommend to start? Like. What, what's the best way to, to start it? I think the first step is a mindset, you know, mentality. When we look at nature, we look at the big things we see. We look at the trees, we look at the flowers, we look at, um, you know, everything we see. But we need to start thinking about what we don't see, see which is in the soil. The biggest step with natural farming is to say, okay, now I'm going to start focusing on what's in the soil and if it's healthy for the soil or if it's not, okay? So that's kind of like step one. And then after that, when you really want to start getting into it, is um, just simply get a um, some undercooked rice and a wooden box or wicker box or cardboard box. And you want to find some really big, strong trees, which are growing like in a forest near where you live. Um, if you don't have a lot of trees, maybe just an area where there's a dense, um, growth of vegetation and you set this um, box of rice out and what it'll do is if you remove you know uncover the leaves and get it down to the soil the soil microbes will grow up in this box in about three to ten days uh -huh. now you can take that box home with the microbe collection so now you can have the microbes from that 
um, rich um, forest area and you put those into your gardens with various methods. So step one would be that simple. Um, spend a few dollars and, and you can get a nice IMO1 collection. For example, I've got some plants in the garden and I want to, to recycle them to make some nutrients. How should I how should I do that instead of just chucking it in the compost and things like that? Compost is good, but for, for me, you know, the typical hot compost, you lose something. When you kill bacteria, hot, right? Heat, yeah, you got those chemical reactions in there and energy is lost in the form of heat. So a better way to reuse your plants is to just take that plant material that you chop down Put it into a container with some rainwater, with you know water without chlorine, and and then a handful of soil, like preferably forest, like leaf mold soil. And in about two weeks, these plants will start breaking down um, with the help of the microbes. And now that liquid can be used as a fertilizer. You know, do as nature does. Yeah. It's important to mulch because you know, just like in nature, in the fall, the tree drops its leaves. So it's not only covered, but also it's protection for the microbes and things come up higher up to the surface. So it's the same in your garden. You want to, you know, with you being the, the master of your garden, sometimes you have to add things um, that Mother Nature would add, you know, that necessarily, you know, might not be um, the way your garden works. If you see loads of different colors in your eyes, don't worry at all. It's actually a really good sign because this means there is a great biodiversity of microbes that you collected. So all you need to do is to weight your rice and weight your sugar and you should have equal weight. Mix it well by hand and the sugar will pull the liquid out of your microbes which are all in your rice. And once the liquid is pulled out, they're gonna dry out and they're gonna go dormant. But no worries because once you rehydrate them, they're gonna come back to life. Once it's all mixed well, all you need to do is to pack it into a glass jar. Uh, the main thing is that you don't seal the jar completely but you can leave like a loose cap. You don't need to pack that too much. And you should always leave a head space in your jar in order to have some air. So after you collected your indigenous microbes with your rice box and you turned it into IMO2, what you need to do is to just dilute this IMO2 in water and feed it to your soil in order to improve the biodiversity of bacteria and germs in your soil. So it's recommended to dilute this at a ratio of 1 1000, which means 1 milliliters per liter of water. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna add half a tablespoon to these three liters of water and it doesn't need to be scientific, it's absolutely fine even if it's just a rough measurement. I'm using rainwater or you could use unchlorinated water. You just have to leave your water out for 12, 24 hours. Just because if there is chlorine, obviously it's gonna kill your bacteria. You could water your garden once per week with this solution of bacteria. That's gonna improve the web of germs and beneficial bacteria in your garden. I'm glad I had this live conversation with Marco that hopefully explained many things and clarified how to get you started for organic gardening. It's absolutely essential that people start to be aware of this of the damages that we're creating to soil and nature instead of helping out in the production of fruit and vegetables. And over the years, that's going to be a big issue because instead of helping nature, we are actually killing the planet. Most producers in the world use chemicals to have a big harvest, a big crop at the end of the year. But in the end, it's up to us to do our small part and start this change. I hope you liked today's video and that you start applying these easy steps to get you started into organic gardening. If you liked it, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification setting to be notified every time I post a new video about urban gardening or a healthy life. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next Friday at 12. See ya!